Hey, hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Nicole and this is Divine Lead Design Studio and today we are here for some slow stitching set day. So let's get started. Morning or good evening everybody welcome back to the channel thank you for taking some time out of your day and spending it with me or even just if you've seen this and wanted to know what it's all about clicking on the video I do appreciate that if you are new here and you've not seen um, any of my channel before I'm a multi craft channel and I do have a lot of different segments um, throughout the week we have some diet at the moment we've got some diamond painting we've got um, cross stitch stitch with me's slow stitching Saturday we have a sewing tutorial every Wednesday and every Thursday Australian Eastern Standard of time at 8 a.m. we have a live stream where I'm working something off my shelf so it's just crafting with DDs but people join me and we have a little bit of fun have a bit of a chat in the comments and uh, get some crafting done so today we are here for our slow stitching that day and uh, that means that for my interpretation of slow stitching is anything that is done by hand so that could be something like what we're doing today which is, which is a sashiko maybe some thread painting embroidery english paper piecing essentially any needlework that is done by hand now today we are working on a brand new project it is a sashiko project it's called four seasons it's by qh textiles and this was designed in 2021 um, it is on sashiko cloth and this cloth is just absolutely divine it is absolutely beautiful to to um the feel of it is actually really nice um, i could imagine myself making a pair of pants out of this cloth um and you know lounge pants or something like that i believe it is a linen um and it is designed by kai uh, fujita I think is how you pronounce the name um, I'm not really sure I'm not up on my Japanese pronunciation so I'm sorry if I did butcher that um, as I said it was designed for QH textiles I got this piece when did I get this I got this um, when I went to the quilt show last year with a group of friends and I got a couple of um, sashiko pieces and some Japanese linen and all that sort of stuff um, I am at the moment and if you've been around any length of time you've already seen it I am at the moment in the process of um, making a quilt with sashiko panels this is not going into it so um basically i this is a cream color and i want to work on minor or white panels that i'm going to be using <coughs> and they're just um simple designs and i'm going to do uh, a lot of four of them and then turn that into a centerpiece of a quilt and then do some quilt blocks around the outside with some japanese linens that is the plan so um i have been looking online and gail and uh, morgana stitchy moon um who is now stitchy moon crafts actually uh did tell me that the um website is on etsy the the company that we bought our panels from is on etsy which is east west um designs i've gone and had a look and i've got a couple in my cart but i think i just like the idea of actually seeing the designs in person not just online so i'm going to wait until i go to townsville in august and um i'm going up for the quilt show uh, we have friends up there a friend up there that um invited us to come up so we're going to go up and stay with her and spend four days at the craft show um, so I'm planning on getting more then. So the quilt is a little ways off, but that will also give me an opportunity to go and visit Indigo Niche, um, um, East West, and um, any other Sashiko place there that I can get some different uh, fabrics for the quilt as well. So it'll be a good opportunity to do that. So why not kill two birds with one stone, as they say. So as I said, a couple of weeks ago, um, I missed last week, but a couple of weeks ago, we spun up Four Seasons and... Um, this is the second sashiko project that i've had um this year so basically what happens is i all of my slow stitching stuff so all of my embroidery anything that i've got there that needs to be done so whether it's thread painting embroidery sashiko english paper piecing or anything like that has been all put on the wheel uh, we also have wool felt applique all sorts of stuff on the wheel so um i spin that and you'll get to see that in just a moment we're going to spin in a little while and uh basically we um work on that the next week so today we are doing sashiko and it was decided in that video that i was going to do a navy blue let me just get my needle which seems to be flopping around navy blue uh cotton it is an olympus cotton i believe this excuse me is one um 
I'm, I believe it is um, Olympus cotton. So there's 40 meters in a skein, and basically it comes um, it comes knotted up, and I have the piece here, and basically you just find the center of it, and it ends up being a, a huge circle, and then I just cut it in half. And then I've just got one of these little rings that I, I put it on. Um, you can get various different colours, like I've got navy blue. Um, I've also done a project in um, in red, which was what I'm doing all of the quilt ones in. So you can see there that this has just been pulled off the ring. Okay, and then it just sits there. So it's quite long, the strands that I pull off. And basically... Um, yeah, so I've got the red one on the go, which I, as I was just saying, I need to get more panels for that. But it also comes in white, and it also comes in variegated. I've got greens and um, Air Force blue, and then there's a black as well. Then there's a really deep, deep navy. But I've gone for this particular navy blue. I like the, um, <coughs> excuse me, I like the Olympus blue that they have. Um, some brands can be slightly darker slightly lighter but they're generally around this so this is what I'm going to be using um, now this comes with uh, like it's you can separate it so you could have that for the back but I like to have a little bit of stability uh, to mine because I can be a little bit heavy-handed when it comes to hand stitching so I have the two two there you can put interfacing on the back but I don't tend to do that I just use the two um, the two pieces and I keep them together so basically what will happen is I am going to keep keep these together and then I'm just going to do this outside running stitch first and get that out of the way and then that's going to keep my two pieces together but first of all I'm going to head off and I'm going to give this a quick press because I've just pulled it out of the packet I'm going to give it a good press um, and before I start doing that running running stitch so I'll be back in a moment with it all pressed and ready to go okay so we're all pressed and ready to go i've loaded up my needle now i don't do knots or anything in my sashiko and i'm no expert by any means there are many channels out there that will teach you exactly how to do it but um i basically as i said i'm going to do this running stitch around the outside first because that's going to secure my two pieces together but i just thought i'd give you a bit of a preview of a couple of pieces that I've been working on this one again is by the same um, company and um, I believe the stall I got it from was East West um, uh, Sashiko um, and you can see that this is white so this one is one of the ones that is going to be going into my um, into my uh, quilt panel now I haven't done the running stitch around the outside because I'm not sure if every single one has running stitch around it so I just want to that will take me no time at all to do that so um, I'm okay with that and then basically I also have one that I was just creating myself I seen a um, piece at that quilt show of Borrow which is um, a form of sashiko uh, mending and basically I've done this on the the channel um, this has been in the making for quite some time and I got a little bit crazy a bit of a little bit lazy and didn't get it all done um, but I'm pretty sure I've got all my stitches that I want to get into this now um, I just added a series of crosses on the green ones just to make it a little bit more cohesive so you can see there that that is looking pretty good um, and I just finished this week putting some um, stitches in and now I will need to get that finished and completed so they are some of the um, past uh, projects that we've worked on and um, so you can see that they do uh, go together quite quickly um, now as I was saying I don't uh, do a knot or anything like that I generally leave a tail of about I don't know two or three inches and then I get a really fine um, crochet hook one that you use for like um, doily making and stuff like that using really fine fibers to create something i get that and then i weave it through the running stitch and when i end i also leave a bit of a tail as well and have that going through so basically all i do uh, all you do with sashiko i'd say 95 percent of the things that you get on the market are pre-printed um so i'm going through and you can see i'm just leaving that bit of a tail and then after i've done 
um, and finished and whatnot, I'll weave that through. I don't worry about doing it right now. Um, I just start finishing it off. But before I start a new piece, I'll weave that through. So at this point, these little corners can be a little bit tricky. So I go from point to point, And this is probably the only time I really do one stitch at a time is on these corners because I don't want to... Um, muck them up or anything like that so you can see there that that blue is going to be really nice now if I pull that that's going to come all the way out um, so we've got a little bit of a tail which could probably come back a little bit so you can see there you can adjust your tail and that's going to give me enough to weave that through um, about 10 stitches I weave it through okay and you try you got to try not to have jump stitches and, and whatnot now this is the first time where I have actually done a scenery um, so I am assuming that we're going to just not have jump stitches or anything like that um, I just finish off one motif at a time okay because this is dark if it was white uh, like a dark background fabric and then white with it you wouldn't actually see those jump stitch but because it is a cream or if it was white you would be able to see those um, jump stitches so to avoid that um, I mean if I can start it and finish it just here then yes I can jump across you're not going to really see that but if there's a big jump I'm not going to do that so for instance in this one here you can see like I could start um, possibly start here go up and around go all the way around and then I can start trying to finish off some of these like just keep the thread going does that make sense um, so that's sort of what I am endeavoring to do is to keep the thread going without having drums um, jump threads or finishing it but as I said this is not a traditional um, piece like most um, sashiko projects are actually um, very geometrical and and they and you can do the thread without breaking or stopping the thread this is completely different this is just something that I want to do it will probably get put into a um, into a cushion and used on the couch and whatnot so um, or into my, in my room and whatnot so yeah um, there are many different books out there that you can find um, where you can learn all about Sashiko. Um, so yeah, go and have a look um, for some of those um, books. There is a lot out there and there are a lot of great channels as well that have lots of information about Sashiko as well. Because as I said, I am no expert, but um, I like doing it. I find it very rhythmic takes me a little while to get into the swing of things but I do a few stitches at a time okay and the idea is just to do a couple of stitches at a time and you get a rocking motion okay um, of just loading the needle up with your thread so I'm going to spend a little time with you today doing a little bit of this and then basically what will happen is I will continue on doing this project during the week while I'm editing and uploading videos and stuff and um, you know just anything where I've got to sit and wait for stuff I will do um, do the sashiko now I could have very well t picked out a whole heap of different colors and pretty much done it like an embroidery because this is what I would class this more as an embroidery except we're using the sashiko stitch because we've got all the different colors but I'm going to do it all in one color because I like the look of that, just in, in the monochromatic words. <laughs> um, look, so that's why I'm going. And you only need to use one strand because it's quite thick. Um, I would say it's a little bit, maybe a little bit finer than a perlite, maybe the same size. So you could, if you don't have sashiko cotton, you could definitely use that if that's all you've got. Um, there are many free designs that you can get to and trace out some geometrical ones and and whatnot. And once you get going, you you sort of just get into the rhythm of it as well. So it's really good. Now I um, 
have, as I said, I've got a whole heap of different colors. Um, the Olympus and uh, Daruma have a multitude of colors as well. Um, I use these needles. I find these are the, uh, the best ones to use. Um, Olympus needles are really good too. Um, and there's also other different um, items such as thimbles and, and whatnot, but I find them to be a little bit cumbersome and I can't use them. Um, so I just do a little bit at a time. So that's why it takes my, me to, to do the projects just that little bit longer than most because I just cannot get into the rhythm with that. Um, it feels like it's cutting the circulation. Even though it's not tight, it feels like it's cutting my circulation off. So yeah. Um, so we're going to stitch along for a little bit, have a little bit of a whip and chat, um, cause this is now a whip, it's a work in progress. Um, and we'll spin the wheel up in a couple of, maybe 10, 15 minutes. We'll spin the wheel up, find out what we're going to be working on next week. Um, never know, I might end up having to work on this and we'll finish it in two weeks. But I like the, just the randomness of my wheel. Um, I, as I said, I've got all of my hand embroidery and um wool felt applique projects that I've got on the go apart from my patreon ones um on that wheel um we have a, a really big um project on the go um from the same designer as the um the birdsville cushion um and I'm doing around the garden it was a gift and um so I'm doing a little bit of that well actually I'm doing the whole thing I'm taking everybody along for the process um, for all the mistakes and all the little obstacles that I hit and all that sort of stuff so um you can see there like when you do one stitches at a time it looks super neat um, but with Sashiko you're doing multiple um, stitches and you still get that neatness but you just get more done quickly and so for those that don't know what Sashiko is, Sashiko was um, born out of necessity. Uh, it basically, um, they used it as a mending process and that's where this table runners come in, in into play. So you can see here, I've just got layers of fabric. So we have a base um, fabric so I used calico in this case and then I had a bunch of um, Japanese linens and wools that I got from Indigo Niche and I think a couple other ones and basically I just cut out little squares different shapes and all the rest of it and started laying it laying down so it looks like I've patched it and mended it and that's what they used to do to their jackets and and their pants and everything like that because they don't believe in waste and so basically if a pair of pants got a hole in it or anything like that, they would use something else that was often rubbish or they would normally, you would normally disregard or get rid of. Basically, um, they would take those little swatches and then they will add them on. It makes their clothing, um, especially in uh, rural areas, it made their clothing last longer. It also made their clothing thicker so that they were warm when it was cold. And um, yeah, and so this went from feeling really flimsy to after we added all the stitching on it to feeling really sturdy. Um, so now all I need to do, and this whole project is getting done um, by hand, and um, I'll also be essentially quilting it by hand as well. I'm going to uh, add a back to it. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so basically everything will get done by hand. And um, I'm not going to put a binding on this. I will actually add the two layers together, sew all, all the way around, then turn it out and then hand cl close it. I've also, um, let me just bring this up for you. Oh, there goes my piece. Let me just move that out of the way. Um, so I've also sewn on a border as well, and this is hand sewn, and I've just used a back stitch for that. But you can see that that has really stitched on there quite nicely. Um, and I will link all the videos up for that I've done with this on uh, underneath this video as well, so you can go and have a look. And I'll also um, upload uh, add the link for the other one as well, which is essentially what I'm doing today. So I don't really need to do that, but. It's nice and thick, it feels really good, and it has actually inspired me to make some clothing 
um, in this method as well. So I'm thinking that I'm going to make a jacket um, because I wear a lot of jackets and it'll be perfect for winter up here and it'll be handmade. So at the moment I'm in the process of just thinking about what colorway I want to have, whether I want to have it in like a green colorway, do I want to have red, do I want to have it in blue, because as you can see, you can get a lot of different um, bits and pieces from that. Now, I do have a pattern in mind. I cannot think of the name of it off the top of my head. I think I may have already purchased it. I, If I haven't, if I have, I will leave a link down below. If I haven't, I will leave that down, information down below to, to check back at another time. But anyway, because um, it's not really, a, a, it's, yeah, it wasn't something that I was thinking about. It, the course of the conversation's just gone that way. So, but yes, I definitely want to make a, a jacket and also maybe a handbag or something like that. Um, you know, a smallish project. I might probably go with that first, but I really did like the process of making this. This was a fabulous little, and I just seen a, at the quilt show, I seen a table runner that looked very similar to this. And I thought they didn't have any patterns or, well, they had kits, I think to begin with, but by the time I decided that I was going to get it, there was no kits left. So I went, you know what? I could just make that myself. Um, so I bought fabric from the particular place that had the kits. Um, and I brought some like Japanese linens as well um, that I'm using for the border. And um, yeah, so basically that's what I did. And I've also got some linen on the bolt here that I'm just going to use for the backing. It's in a lighter cream color, but I figured that'll be okay. And then I'm going to hand quilt it essentially to keep those layers together. Um, they will be all stitched all the way around once the borders are on. Um, and then I'll turn it out, give it a really good press. And then I'll just probably, I'll um, just do random little cross stitches to um, quilt it all together and when I go to do that um, I'll let you know that that's what I'm doing and um, yeah when I when I get to it I don't know but anyway that is the plan for this and then as I said I've got the other one which is a quilt so you'll get to see them from time to time a lot of the time if I'm doing finishing and stuff like that that will actually be um, a video over on Patreon because we have a finishing class right um, happening over there right now if that's something that you're interested in um, by all means come on over to our patreon and join um, it is the silver level that you want to join um, that has the finishing class on that now um, we have a lot of other stuff happening over there on the silver pa um, level as well uh, we also have a gold and a um, higher tier on there as well where you get a handmade uh, project bag from me um, and that particular tier could change next year it could be something different again so um yeah so basically um if you do head over there and you're looking for the finishing classes i'll be doing all sorts of finishing uh from quilting to cross stitch and anything in between that needs finishing um and all that sort of stuff so um they will be going up on the um patreon channel from time to time um, at this point, they're not a monthly uh, class. They are a, they'll probably be a bi-monthly class because I've got to get stuff finished to do the finishing. Um, so yeah, so at this point, it'll be bi-monthly. So I'm actually really knuckling down right now and getting a lot of my items finished um, to do in different aspects. And also, I have the Cross Stitch magazine, which is also part of the, you get that as part of the silver tier. Um, if you're just interested in the Cross Stitch magazine, then you can join the $8.50 tier. And when, um, that is our bronze tier, okay? If you have any questions at all, just um, either ask them here. Or you can send me a message um, via email. Or you can contact me at Divinely Design Studio on Instagram. And all that information is down below. Um, so for the most part, I get about four to five stitches on. But you can see how easy and quick it's going to be. The geometrical ones can be a little bit challenging to get, like, where you don't cross your threads over. Um, because that's what you're going for. You don't want to cross your threads over. And um, I'll just show you on the... <coughs> Still got a little bit of weaving to do on the back but 
these sections here you don't want to cross out like you don't want to um you can see on the back so you don't want to go side to side you want to go opposite each other so i don't know if you can see that or not so in the center it looks like a little bit of um satin stitch and then you've just got those dots and that's what you want to go for so um i've still as i said i've still got a little bit of weaving to do on this one but for the most part it's done um and then so you sort of want to just keep a line so you've got to sort of pick a line and see where it's going to go and you've got to keep going so you don't get those broken threads um and that can be a bit challenging at times and as I said, I am not a professional by a long shot. I just love doing it. And sometimes I do find myself just sitting there and doing one stitch at a time um, because I do a lot of embroidery. So sometimes I <laughs> swing back into embroidery mode instead of sashiko mode. Um, and I think I've discussed this before. I actually, um, she hasn't been quilting or doing any sashiko. She hurt her hand a couple of years back and it's taken a lot she said i think she had quite extensive surgery on it um i actually haven't seen her i've spoken to her several times on the phone but i don't know the extent of the damage to her hand but uh, a customer a customer customer of mine and also a friend of mine she started out as a customer and we ended up becoming quite good friends um and she lives a fair hike from me so um and she doesn't come into town very often or anything like that so basically um she rings me on the phone tells me what's going on anyway a couple of years ago she hurt her hand pretty badly and she's done no quilting or anything like that but there was a while for a while there i got nothing but sashiko stuff from her um and she uses a lot of variegated threads and whatnot in table runners and placemats and all sorts of stuff and what she'd do is she'd get these squares and she'd get um because you can buy some of these designs on the off the bolt as well so you can get them to the size that you want and then she'd sit there at night and do the sashiko and then she'd bring turn them into quilts um so sometimes um she'd do blocks around them or she'd have little sections and and all the rest of it so a lot of time i was doing stitch in the ditch on those ones or um sometimes she'd say oh i want you to run a line of stitching right beside it so a quarter inch away from it um and yeah so basically i had one stage there i had so much such coming in like everything from table runners placemats you name it she was doing it um, and you don't want to pull too too tight either. You want it to for it to sit um, as far as you can. So that's why I sort of give it a little bit of a a pull every now and again. It just gets those stitches to relax. Because um, as I said, I am a little bit heavy handed at times. I try not to be, but I just I don't know. I just get a little bit heavy handed. Get a, get a little bit carried away with pulling the thread. <laughs> I do it on my cross stitch as well. I've got better. I have got better, and cross stitch has helped me do that. So that's good. All right, what I might do, I've come around to this end. I'll come up to this end and then we'll spin the wheel and then we'll talk about what we're going to be working on next week and then I'll do a little bit more. So I generally just stay here for a little while until I've done a section and then I go from there. So and let's have a look on the back. You can see you just get that running stitch. So that's now joining these two pieces together. So this back bit is now being used as if it is a stabilizer. Um, and then that's just going to make it nice and easy to go through um, all the rest and, and um, won't be so um, easy for me to pull it too tight. And I do like um, the fact that it's got the two layers and it comes with the two layers. I believe some people do separate them. I personally don't like to do that. I just like the sturdiness. I, I think it's... Um, it gives it just a, a better feel and texture and it doesn't look as puckered. Does that make sense? It's just a personal preference really. So yeah. And you're just basically going around following the line. So you can you can imagine it's quite relaxing. Um, I tend to do it on the weekends 
and sometimes, I'll, as I said, I'll be sitting there waiting for something to export or whatever for the videos. Um, and it's great just to sit there while that's happening. And I get five minutes here and five minutes there. And I have it sitting in my little pouch that sits right where I do all my editing. And I have my cottons and stuff in here. And I've got a pair of scissors that remain in it. And that's just my sashiko pouch. And that's all I do. I just got my little project. So if I know that I'm going to the doctor's or I'm running out the door and I know that I'm going to sit around and wait for a bit or maybe going um, shopping with the girls and I might be sitting there waiting for them to come out because I don't go into every shop with them. Um, I have that in my handbag. It's it's small and light and I can just, yeah, and it's just a basic pouch that I've made um, and put a couple of snaps on it and it's good to go. Um, it was made out of old upholstery fabric. Someone gave me a whole heap of scraps once before, once upon a time and there was a piece in there to make a, a nice pouch and I thought, you know what, that'll be perfect. And it's quite sturdy, so... Um, and then rather than have the scissors floating around, I just have them in these, these little coin pouches and these, again, it's made exactly the same. Um, they're just a, a bit bigger. And, uh, yeah, basically, yeah, they, they're good to keep the cottons in. I usually... I, I don't have many of these left anymore because I gave a lot of them away for um, for gifts and whatnot. And they're good because, like, my needles also fit in there as well. Um, I This one's slightly smaller, but um, normally I can slot my these scissors in and I put the point down and they just go in nicely. And there you go. Um, I'll leave a link down below where you can uh, find to make that. So, um, yeah, this one is slightly smaller than the ones that I've um, had. It's just a little bit smaller. It's only probably about a quarter of an inch smaller than what it should be. Um, but it makes all the difference of putting in a... And I think these are... Oh, how big are these? I think these are about four inches. Let me just get my ruler. I don't know what that is in centimetres. Yeah, little, they're about four and a half inches. So if you had a three inch pair of scissors, they'd fit in there really nicely. Um, so yeah, or even something like these little ones here that I have in a, a tin. Um, this is just one that I have sitting here all the time. And it's great because I can hold my, um, my needle threader and stuff and it just closes and I have like <laughs> all the stuff stuck to it. <laughs> Um, so yeah, these just sort of follow me around the house because they have everything that I need. I don't tend to take them too often out of the house. But there are lots of little knick-knacky videos that we've got on the channel. Um, what else do we, this week we also had a tutorial go up uh, for our sewing notions little, um, so I've got, I've got, um, that I just found before it was underneath the, the bench, but I've just been, I want to make a few of these and sit them up on the bench because I've got pencils and markers and all that sort of stuff and, and whatnot. And that was the little video that we had, um, went up on Wednesday and uh, the week before we had our wonder clip tray, which would be perfect to use for orts or anything like that. If you wanted to make that, um, as well, I know the tutorials are there, so I'll link them up down below as well for you. Go and check them out because it's not always about slow stitching, is it? Um, so, yeah, I love doing this. It's just so... After counting and measuring and doing quilting and all that sort of stuff and doing all the math all week, sometimes you just need to have something where you can go, you know what, I don't want to count. I don't want to have to measure. I don't want to have to math today. I would just like to sit and chill and do a little bit of stitching and this fits that bill big time all right so what we're um, just about come up to the end we'll um cut to the video and find out what we're going to be working on next week all righty so we are ready to spin up the wheel so let's give it a spin and see what we're working on Some English paper piecing trip to the stars. Yay! Ooh. 
Oh, how exciting. We are going to be stitching on Trip to the Stars, which is from the Soalicious Baker. I have not, I have been so slack with this. I have not worked on this at all. So if you haven't seen it before, I've got it in a, a container now. And I've got my little... When I'm doing my EPP, I've got a little mat there. But these are the fabrics that I am going to be working with for this. And it is called Curiouser and Curiouser. It's by Tula Pink. Um, and as you can see, we've got lots and little bits and pieces all cut out. And my background is going to be white. Um, I've got my pen in there and I've got like scissors and all that sort of stuff. They're all the hexagons that I've already made. Um, it's got my thimble in here as well, which I was looking for the other day and I didn't even think to look in here. So I'll pop that in there. Um, so yeah, so basically we have a bunch of little stars to make and that's the fabric that we're going to be using. Um, that's all I, I've got. Also got tiny beasts to go with this as well because we've got some of these smaller ones if I need it. I don't think I'm going to need it, but just in case, I will um, I will have that there. So let me just put this over. And as you can see, it is making a bunch of stars. <coughs> as I said, I've done the white um, ones, and I've done the center, and I've done the corners. Um, so now I'm just up to making the stars, and there's a lot. <laughs> there is... Um, 66 printed full stars okay so that's these ones there and then there's 76 white full stars so you can see the white ones there okay and now from for each one of those i have for the 76 i have to make 456 in white and they're the little diamonds and then um but i'll go over this more next week and uh yeah there's a lot that I need to do, but it's going to be absolutely gorgeous once it's done. And this is all English paper piecing. So this is another one that's going to get done by hand. I'm also going to hand quilt this when it comes time to it. Um, and yeah, the only thing that might not get done by hand would be the binding. I might sew that on with the sewing machine. Or I can make the back a bit bigger and have a faux binding. That's a plan. All right, so that is what we're going to be working on next week. Time permitted that I am here next week. If not, it will be in the next couple of Saturdays. Um, so, yeah, so I've got to um, make sure that I've got all my bits and pieces and, and stuff ready to go. And, um, yeah, get it. Um, get some more stars done. Like, I have been really incredibly slack with that. I bought that last year at the um, craft show and i made my hexagons i done my white hexagons i started making the stars i put it in the container and that's pretty much been it so um i really need to get my finger out now in saying that i actually have it set up well, not set up, but in the container sitting in the lounge room. But I have been focusing on things that I need to get finished. Like I want to get finished. Um, so that was the sashiko that was also in the lounge room. Um, so when I'm sitting there watching TV with my hubby, I've been working on that. Um, and so that was for the table runner. The other sashiko I was, I'd just been doing, I'd done it a couple of times in front of the TV, but mostly that was just while I was doing editing. Um, there was a couple times I did it while I was doing some sprints as well. So over on um, BookTube. So yeah. And so I'm just going to continue doing this. Uh, we do whip updates over on our Patreon as well. So sometimes um, this might not get spun up for a while as it did with the... Um, with the other white sashiko panel it spun up twice i worked on it twice and then that was it well actually i think it might have only spun up once i think it might have just that i started it and then i sort of finished it i did do a couple of updates um in the facebook group but that was after i updated the patreon so if you want to get sneak peeks of things that are happening don't forget to head over and uh have a look there is something there for everybody that's the beauty about of being a multi-craft channel, isn't it? 
Um, I get to do lots of different things. I'm thoroughly enjoying my diamond painting at the moment. Again, that's another no-brainer sort of craft. I don't have to think about it. Um, I just get in and start doing it. Find the number, put it on the symbol. <laughs> and that's sort of, yeah, that's been consuming a lot of my time for the month of June. So, but it's looking like it's going to be on track to be finished um, by the end of June. And then I've got a couple of smaller ones that I want to get um, finished. They've been started. Uh, one was started by Nera Lee. The other one was started by me, which is the Day of the G Dead Girl. And I've also got a um, uh, one that two sisters that I was working on for my best friend. And I can say that because she doesn't watch my channel. The only videos that she watches are, remember right back, if you've been here for a while and you've followed me when, since I've started, which there are a lot of um, my subscribers that are still here from when I first started and comment often. Remember when I first started, I made, um, some of my first t tutorials were about the Christmas cards, turning them into little trinket boxes and stuff like that. Um, she loves those videos and so she watches them all the time. <laughs> There's 3,000 views on, on the first one and I swear she's probably done 2,000 of them because she says she watches it all the time and then she sends people to there as well and then she goes into like craft groups. She's in a couple of waste not what not um, craft groups and she's shared that because it's recycling and or reusing rather than recycling. Um, yeah, so... <laughs> Which is great. I, I love her for it. <laughs> I'm like, you know I've got other videos, right? Like, and that was when I was using my old phone as well. So I had to talk really loud for the voice to be heard. And like, I go and watch them now and I think, holy crap, I was yelling. How did the neighbours not hear me? Like, it, it sounds like I'm yelling. Like, you've got to turn the, like, if you go and watch it, turn the volume down. <laughs> okay? Because loud it comes through loud and I don't know I don't remember them being that loud but apparently I had to yell to get my voice to be heard not yell but project my voice whereas now and I suppose too like that was when I was new and I didn't understand and I was new to editing and didn't realize I could lower my volume of my voice down which I do a lot now because right now the camera is right there and my mouth is right there <laughs> so and the microphone is right there so it's pick, like I'm not talking directly into the microphone but it picks up everything really clearly so now I do um I do lower my voice a little bit just to make it a little bit less frightening when you click on and then this Aussie chick is like hey how you going <laughs> and scare the bejesus out of you Another thing I like about doing such a coat, it is not difficult to thread a needle because <laughs> they're using, the needles are quite, have a, quite a large eye in them. Um, so it makes it super nice to, to work with <laughs> and whatnot. All right, well, we've been on for quite some time now. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to end today's video. Um, if, you're in the fa if you're not in the Facebook group, make sure that you join the Facebook group. The link is down below. Uh, if you're interested in our Patreon, which will help me to keep bringing free content to, um, to the masses and you would like to support the channel, uh, please head over to our Patreon and consider becoming a Patreon. I promise you there are lots of goodies over there happening. We've got all sorts of sewing tutorials, extra sewing tutorials um, that have not ev ever been seen on the channel. And um, yeah, we've got lots of other little things on offer as well. So head over, check out it here and um, yeah, make the decision to become a Patreon and help support um my fa my family and my channel i really do appreciate it if you do decide that all right so as i said i'm going to keep going with this um i've got a few things to do i've got to go and pick narrowly up 
in a moment so that's another reason that I'm wrapping up a bit quicker um, so yeah so basically I'm going to keep doing that and um, go over join our Facebook group and um, and our Patreon and that way you can get whip updates and um, you never know next week it might spin up again and you'll get to see it again all right that's it from me today as always I hope you're having a lovely day getting lots of stitching in and I will see you in the next video bye for now